Welcome back to the Virtual Amdex podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Guzman, and today I have the amazing Kristen Hillman with me, and I'm so excited for you guys to hear her story and her journey. So welcome, Kristen. Thank you, Natalie, for having me. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about you. What do you do? Where are you from? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I am in Houston, Texas, but one of the beautiful things of the business world now is it doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> I do financial reporting and strategy. My business is Baticula. It's a little hard to say, but it has deep meaning for me personally. Um, I have expansive corporate accounting and finance experience. And when I found this online business world, um, I quickly realized so many of my peers had no idea how to run a business. You know, these hobbies, especially in 2020, like exploded into cash cows, but they had no idea how to run a business, what's appropriate to spend. And so that's where in particular I came from. I um, part-time homeschool my kids and they study Latin heavily. And that's where the name Baticula comes from. It's a Latin word meaning little vines. And I love opening a bottle of wine and having community with my friends. And that's what I desire for bringing the finance discussion to a business. It's like we're opening a bottle of wine together. We're just chatting and strategizing and making it comfortable because I know there's so many people, it causes so much anxiety. Um, and so that's kind of my goal. That's the direction of where we're headed is to really bring up to the forefront that talking about financials, planning is not scary and it's actually empowering. That is amazing. I, you know, I own three businesses. So financial planning is always like, can be really overwhelming because I have three different budgets and, you know, all these different you know, tax things and like trying to plan, you know, the savings and then um, the growth and trying to make sure I don't commingle all of them is like, can be really overwhelming. So that's awesome. So you're kind of, do you say like, you're more like um, a coach where you kind of guide them through the steps or how would you describe your position? Sure. So Veticula is a boutique CFO firm. And so we do full done for you. We have very customized financial statements that we provide and then CFO support um, above and beyond that. We also have a consulting side, but that is fully customized and really for higher level, typically entrepreneurs that are over seven figures um, that really already have good solid financial statements, but don't know what to do with them. Oh, that's awesome. Okay, cool. So what do you, what's kind of like the journey that they go through when they, um, you know, uh, sign up for their boutique? What are the kind of steps that you guys go through with them? Um, yeah, sure. The first thing we do is a full, because I believe in a holistic view of the business. Um, I'm not a fan of the whack-a-mole concept where every part is different and separate. Um, so we take a step back and because of all of my corporate experience, and I was in an executive level, we look at the business as a whole. Um, we also take a step back for you as the entrepreneur or founder and really understand your mindset about money, how it's impacting your decisions, because I can't help guide you if I don't know the basis and the foundation of the types of decisions you're making so we go through a pretty extensive review process and really understanding your mindset on money, numbers. Um, there seems to be no commonality on where somebody is financially or just size-wise in their business and their money mindset. It's completely unrelated. So that's why we brought that piece in. And then we kind of go to the operational standpoint, um, making sure that your financial data is there, that it's accurate, or do we take over and implement a new custom reporting system? And then we start really diving in and every client has a different journey because their business is different and unique. But everything we do comes back to you and what are your personal goals? Because I have clients that have zero desire to work more than certain hours a week. I have clients that need every penny out of their business. And so we customize that plan 
Um, the firm is a CFO firm. Um, so we focus primarily, the niche is on financial strategy for service providers, though. That's awesome. Yeah, that's definitely neat. Yeah. And I've realized that, you know, a majority of my friends are entrepreneurs. And so um, I've realized, you know, how we made our money, you know, the different incomes, how many hours we work, it's all different, right? Um, yeah. I know a lot of people always ask me, you know, my business hit six figures in three months, and they always ask, um, oh, how much did you spend the ad spend? It was all organic. So like, just that was like my first thing that I realized that so many businesses are different because, you know, some are focused on organic, some um, focus on PPC, which is like Google, you know, pay-per-click ads, so like Google ads. Um, and then some are like Facebook ads, you know, and things like that. So it's crazy how many different aspects go into not only our business, but our financials of our business too. Right. Well, because ultimately we're here to make money and there's no reason to be ashamed to say that. If you're not, it's a hobby. And don't ever say those words. The IRS will just nail you if you say that. But I mean, we're here to run a business. And so we want to make sure we're profitable and healthy financially. Um, and sometimes that means adds to, you know, a healthy percentage. Sometimes it means do not waste your money on ads. You know, it's all unique because we're unique. That's yeah. the beauty of starting your own business is you build it for you and your lifestyle and what you want it to look like. So yeah, I totally agree. Yeah, that's awesome. And I noticed a lot of entrepreneurs, they don't invest enough in getting help with their financials. They think that yeah. they can do it all. You know, I did um, my bookkeeping for the longest time and um, there's still some things that I do that I shouldn't be doing. <laughs> and I know that. So what would you say to the entrepreneur that is kind of keeping all their financials tight to their chest and needs, you know, does need help right. and doesn't realize it? Well, I think that first and foremost, it comes with realizing it's a key piece of a business. Like if you go and look at corporate, whether you have a happy, negative or no opinion, they do have a pretty structured C-suite, meaning the CEO has, you know, key people in the different parts of the business. All of these parts of the business are really important. Having operational support and having financial support is just as important as having marketing support. It's a valuable part of the business. And I feel like um, at the time of this recording, we just finished my monthly calls with all of my CFO clients. And there was a very common theme of a lot of them are looking for a head of operations there. I think there's a shift where people are starting to realize, okay, like all this stuff matters. It matters to my sanity. It keeps me from burnout and it actually will help me increase the bottom line. I mean, you are required to have financials. You have to file taxes, period. In my opinion, why would you not use that information? Because you got it anyway, and use it to make really smart, confident decisions as you're trying to, you know, evolve your business, whether that's scaling or pivoting or whatever. So to me, it's got to be there anyway. You might as well know how to read the numbers, be educated, and use the numbers. That means you got to have accurate financials and timely, like you can't use them if you get, you know, a report from your bookkeeper three months later, that's too late. Yeah. And, you know, it's, it's funny because the last couple episodes, I've kind of talked a little bit about, you know, analyzing your data and to make improvements in your mm -hmm. business. So getting a sample size, monitoring that data, see how you can improve, see what's not working, what's working. We're not doing yes. that with our financials. I feel like a lot of people are just saying, oh, it is what it is, you know, or they'll have their buckets and they follow maybe like profit first or some sort of method, but they're not really going deeper into that analyzing like what are they using like you said a couple of times you know you said um well we're using what we're not using and or do we really need that and those are really key questions we need to be asking and analyzing in our financials I think it's extremely important yeah pretty often one of the um 
Like I have a client, she's in a service space. It's actually in-person servicing, not online. And she had an extensive list of offerings that she provided and the management and the operations of all of this list, we decided it was time to streamline, eliminate some of those offerings. And the first step that we did was I had her and her team track their time. They didn't want to do it, but we have to know how much time, not only are you spending, but your team's spending. You bring time, you bring your heart and passion, and you bring the financial information because she realized something that was her heart, they were spending almost no time on and making no money. And it's like, okay, do we want to increase the time to see if you make more money? She also found that there was a offering that she had that was dollar amount the most that she was bringing in over 50% of her revenue, but she hated it. And it was very strategic that we started putting in place team members to run that because it was too much to get rid of, but it wasn't with her heart. So then we brought up the team hours and reduced her hours. And so it's got to all be brought together, but it's got to be a piece. Otherwise you're kind of throwing spaghetti at the wall. And ultimately at the end of the day, we want to make a good profit, you know? So I just, it's what I do. It's all I know, but I just, can't imagine running a business without having that foundation of what's happening or what's going to happen. You know, I, the core of what I do, you know, I have bookkeepers that do the past, the historical, but everything I do is about looking forward. Um, and that would be scary to me, um, to run a business without strategically looking forward. And, you know, going back to what you said about tracking time, if, if you are a service-based industry, I feel like you have to track your employees' times. And if you have a online business, um, I use Hubstaff. It's actually amazing because I can record my employees' time. We also can, I have them, um, each client has their own project. And then they also do record the specific tasks they're doing for that client yeah. because my that's for my VA agency. So that was really important because a, a client would say, does it really take that long to do that task? I can tell you how many times I've gotten asked that. And I have sure. lots of records. We have screen recordings. You can see exactly what, what happened and how long it took and all the different breakdowns. But it's also, not only with that scenario, it also helps me because then I can really plan for the future. I know, you know, okay, so it takes this person this long to do it. So next person I hire in the first 30 days, it's going to take them a little longer, but then within 30 days, they should be caught up to that person's time, if not better. And so that's kind of how I also manage my employees. And I think time tracking can just really be great for, um, you know, your financial, you know, planning. I think that's amazing. I totally agree, especially in the agency model. They've got to track their time anyway, more than likely, whether they are billing you or your, you know, part-time employee. Um, and if for sure, if you're passing those hours directly on to the client, um, it's so valuable. We use Clockify, which does the exact same thing. Um, and we absolutely, I have core tasks for the bookkeepers and it's standard across all clients, all projects. And I mean, just the information helps also, like in your example, if you are, your VAs are starting to get maxed out, mm -hmm. you have so much data on how early can you hire somebody and how quickly are you going to be able to bring them financially up to speed where, you know, they're billing as much as you're paying them. Um, it makes it so simple and non-emotional, you know, where you're not like stressing, can I afford this person or not? Well, you just, you know, you know. Yeah, that's why I love the agencies. It's just a really easy business model. And so you really can't go wrong. And everyone needs a virtual assistant these days. So yeah. it worked out perfectly. And I actually did that while um, raising my kids at home as well. So had, do you have any like financial systems when it comes to your kids and how you're teaching them? Oh, that's such a good question. Um, yes, we do. Um, I have teenagers now. 
Mm -hmm. Um, but when they were little, like your kids age, um, we would pretty often, probably, especially in the summer, more often we go to buy a Lego set and I would give them each $20 and say, here you go. Well, you know, most of those Lego sets are way more than $20. So they had to one first decide, do I want to hold this $20 and wait till next time when I have 20 more and I can get the one I want? Or do I just buy something now and then get home and it's done in two minutes? And so that was a really interesting and it wasn't necessarily intentional. But once I started doing it and they learned tax, like, oh, just because it's $9.99 does not mean I'm paying $9.99, you know, to put that little extra buffer in. Um, so they started that and they now remember that pretty well. Um, my youngest actually even talked about it last week and she said, my money, my, like she thought she had earned that $20 and she was like, she th owned that whole process. <laughs> and I was like, well, it was actually my money, but you know, whatever, and whatever. Um, and then when my kids hit 15, um, we actually moved to, I would not call it, um, well, we just send a set amount to their account each month, but that is for all the optionals. Um, that's lunch with friends, that's birthday presents, that, that's, do you want to buy some makeup? whatever it is, and they start to realize how much they're actually spending or not spending on that kind of thing. And it's been really interesting to watch the different personalities um, and how that they manage that. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, we, I love financial systems with motherhood because I, so I'm a former foster kid, so I know one really show me, you know, the different financials and how to yeah. handle them and things like that. And so it was really important to me when I became a mom to implement that with my children. And one of the things we do is I don't pay them for chores because I feel like that's a responsibility that they should already be doing. So, but I, I do read totally them. agree. Yeah. So I pay them to read a book. So, which <laughs> my daughter, yeah. So that way, because of one, my daughter has dyslexia. So it could be a little bit, she loves to read, but it could be a little bit harder for her. And then two, my son would rather be on electronic, which we don't really have in our house, but he always finds a way to like steal a phone or something. <laughs> so I'm like, let's just, you know, you'll get money, but he loves money. So I was like, you'll get some money. If you read a book, you gotta read it. You gotta tell me what it's about. It helps with the reading comprehension as well. And it's kind of like a challenge for them, which I think a good competitive spirit is always amazing. And then I let them set. So, you know, growing up, you always hear, you know, like put 10, 10% for savings and 10% you can spend and, or whatnot and all the different, um, however they broke it up. And my, my kids, I let them decide. I said, how many dollars until you want to spend $1? And so my daughter who likes, you know, toys a little bit more often and likes more like the quick, pleasure right she'll she says every five dollars I want a dollar and she'll go straight to Dollar Tree and get a toy my son says every fifteen dollars he saves he wants one dollar and then he saves that dollar till he gets enough to buy whatever big toy he wants so it might take him a little bit longer but he gets a cooler toy <laughs> so it's like you said the personalities you know and I think it works for them I don't think you know, you're kind of talking about how your entrepreneurs, you know, it's all different plans. And I think with our kids, it should be the same way. So because my daughter just wants, you know, toys a little bit more often, they're a lesser value. That's, you know, th that plan works for her. Whereas my son wants really expensive Pokemon things. <laughs> so it works for him just to save, and he wants to build up his savings because he likes to see money grow. That's enjoyable to him. So I think it's, um, I'm starting to learn that's like really important to have that different financials, even for your children. So that way it can still fit with their personality, but they're still learning discipline and not like hating it. So that's so true. And I think that, you know, there's so much advice out there, whether it's in the business world or the personal world, you need to do this and do this and do this budget, don't budget. And I truly think that is an individual decision because some of my clients, we forecast in such detail because they want that. 
I have others that are like, show me three charts and that's all I want. Anything else will stress me out, you know? And I think it's important to understand how you feel about it and create your own processes and that your kids are already starting to figure that out is so great. Yeah, for the listeners that don't know, my kids are only, um, they were five and six when we started this. My daughter is turning seven this weekend. We're so excited. Um, So yeah, I don't think, I think we started talking about money with them when they were like three and four. It's just been, you know, we have, my kids kind of know about a lot of things, probably most kids find out when they're a little bit older, but I think that's just kind of my upbringing and, you know, how I raise my kids. So, um, yeah, I, they have a blast and they're just, it's really cool to see them really thinking about money in a smart strategic way. Right. Instead of just like, you know, mom, what are you going to buy me today? And said, they're thinking, how can I save up to buy this toy? I love that. That's very wise of you. (laughs) Thank you. Well, I'm so excited that you were here to share all your knowledge today, Kristen. So thank you so much. Where can everyone find you and your company? Absolutely. So on Instagram, we are veticula.financial and our website is veticulafinancial.com. Um, we have some great resources out there. If you're not really sure where you are, what do I need to be doing next? And, um, we just, it is my joy to help other women grow their businesses. Awesome. I'll make sure I put that in the show notes as well. And we'll talk to you guys next time.